So we got some pretty windy uh, action happening right now. And it looks about 30 mile an hour winds. Uh, you see this seagull here, he's flying. along with the wind. You can see the trees moving here. Now this this wind has uh, blown down uh, my neighbor's fence and it's pretty strong. I don't know exactly where it's coming from but it's one of the strongest winds I've experienced here in Northern California. Uh, it probably started about noon and actually that tree in front of us had a major limb break on it. Uh, but yeah, so my guess is we've got some sort of geoengineering going on that's producing these these winds. We've got clear skies. Of course, I, uh, I haven't seen any jets spraying any uh, weather modification materials. And it's very likely these uh, jets would not want to be flying in this type of weather spraying uh, geoengineering materials as well. Now, clear skies, they're, they're actually fairly hazy skies. And if we look off the coast, we see there is a haze off the coast. It's a off the coast here. With heart systems are the actual heating of the ionosphere. And when it when it's heated, because this energy is concentrated, what happens is the ionosphere then lifts up, moves out several hundred kilometers. Now imagine if you're a satellite drifting through space where there's no atmosphere and all of a sudden you hit a column of atmosphere. Uh, what will happen is it creates friction and that friction causes that satellite to burn up and all of a sudden you have a satellite down. When you turn the instrument off, everything goes back to normal um, and you have plausible deniability on a satellite going down because nobody knows this kind of technology generally exists. Now the other place you can use it in that same application, imagine that column uh, going out several hundred miles into space from its normal atmospheric level way down here. Now you've got an incoming comet or asteroid coming in from outer space at tremendous velocity. Now normally those objects, when they hit our atmosphere, they again encounter tremendous friction. They burn up and most objects dis dissipate before they ever hit the surface. But big objects, the kinds of objects people are worried about, um, if you could say go from 30 miles of atmosphere to 200 miles of atmosphere, almost seven times as much distance, and project a trajectory downward, what you're able to do in that instance is literally allow those larger objects to burn up uh, way before they hit the Earth. In fact, the uh, Strategic Studies Institute in London, in reviewing Soviet research on this very same technology, was suggesting uh, that it could be used for an, an anti um, uh, not an anti-satellite technology so much as an anti-asteroid or comet-based technology. But all of those things also create a side effect. When you move that much atmosphere up into space, and it's about 30 miles diameter of uh, these columns, so imagine 30 miles in diameter and a couple hundred miles up, well below that are pressure systems, high pressure, low pressure systems, and jet streams, all of which can be altered by the manipulation of the ionosphere uh, in this way. And that then creates downstream weather effects that, that cannot be modeled, that cannot accurately be predicted, uh, and therein lies uh, huge problems when you start to manipulate 
manipulate uh, by technology, uh, technology applications to create one effect 